So, we will start now quantum statistics. So, we will di discuss Fermi Dirac and Bose Einstein statistics. So far we have discussed classical statistics or Maxwell Boltzmann statistics. Since all the known particles are either fermions or bosons, so Fermi Dirac and Bose Einstein statistics, these two statistics are exact statistics. And in special condition they will reduced to Maxwell-Boltzmann statistics that we will uh, discuss. So, coming back to Fermi Dirac and Bose Einstein statistics, so what we consider? We consider we consider a system of n identical particles described by a wave function psi One two three n, where one denotes the coordinates of particle one, two denotes the coordinates. of particle 2 and so on. Now, if we interchange the positions of any of the two particles suppose we are interchanging the positions of particle 1 and particle 2, the wave function must either remain the same or changes sign. So, we are considering n number of identical particles, they are described by a wave function. We are considering a system of n number of identical particles and the system is described by a wave function psi, which is function of coordinates of all the n particles like 1, 2, 3 up to n, where 1 denotes the coordinates of particle 1, 2 denotes the coordinates of particle 2 and so on. Now, if we interchange the positions of any two particles say particles 1 and 2, the wave, func the wave function must either remain the same or change the sign. Thus, if we operate 
an operator P12 on the wave function psi And this operator, what it does, it exchanges the coordinates of particles 1 and 2. So, now what we are doing, we are operating an operator P12 on the wave function psi, and this operator exchanges the coordinates of particles 1 and 2. So, if we do it, we get, so we are operating the wave function, we are operating the operator on the wave function psi. So, we get So, if we operate P12 on psi, so it gives psi 2, 1, 3 up to n. So, you get back the wave function, original wave function with a plus or minus sign. So, it turns out that that whether the wave function remains the same or changes its sign is a function of the nature of nature of the two identical particles. That are exchanged. So, whether the after operating the wave function, whether the wave function remains the same or it changes the sign, it depends on the nature of the particles that are exchanged. For particles, with integral spin, such as helium 4, a nucleus of helium 4, photon, etcetera. The wave function remains the same. In this case, the wave function is called a symmetric wave function. For particles with integral spin, such as nucleus of helium 4, photon, etcetera, the wave function remains the same. 
In this case, the wave function is called a symmetric wave function. On the other hand, and the particles and we can continue and such particles are known as bosons are known as bosons. So, for particles with integral spin, the wave function remains the same. In this case, the wave function is called symmetric wave function and the such particles are called bosons. So, bosons have integral spins. On the other hand, for particles with half integral spin, such as electron, proton, etcetera, the wave function is called antisymmetric wave function. and such particles are known as fermions. So, for particles with half integral spin, the wave function is called antisymmetric wave function and such particles are known as fermions. And for half integral spin, so basically what I, it said is for half integral spin particles, we get minus of psi after operating the exchange operator. So, as I said, since all known particles are either fermions or bosons, so these two statistics are only exact statistics. Since all known particles are either fermions or bosons which are indistinguishable particles. These two statistics that is Fermi Dirac call it F D and Bose-Einstein, we call it B, are the exact distributions. So, since all known particles are either fermions or bosons, which are indistinguishable particles, these two statistics that is Fermi Dirac, we call it F D and Bose Einstein statistics, we call B are the exact distributions. We shall see
see however that in the case of high temperature and or or low density both these distributions that is if d and b go over go over into the Boltzmann or classical distribution. But we will see however that in, in the case of high temperature limit or low density limit and or, or low density limit both these distributions that is F D and B go over into the Boltzmann or classical distribution. Now, we will uh, do the derivation of these two statistics. So, like before we considered let E j which is function of number of particles n and volume v, the energy states available to a system containing n particles epsilon k the, is the molecular or the quant, the molecular quantum uh, states molecular quantum states and n k. So, n k we can write is function of E j here with number of molecules in the kth molecular state when the system e system itself in the jth state with energy EJ. So, so, we define a three quantities, first quantity is E j, E j is the energy states available to a system containing n particles or energy of state j containing n particles epsilon k is the molecular quantum states and n k is the number of molecules in the kth molecular state when the system itself in the jth state with energy E j. So, the energy of the system in the jth state we define uh, this as E j is sum over k n k times e k n k times epsilon k. Okay. So, the energy of the jth state we can define like E j is nothing but sum over k n k times e k epsilon k and n 
this total number of particle in the jth state is k n k. We know q partition function q is nothing but sum over j e to the minus beta e j. And we can write this one as so e j we are replacing by epsilon i times sum over i epsilon i times n i. So, i is a dummy variable here and here star star denotes star denotes or star signifies the restriction sum over k n k equals to n. So, sum over k n k is nothing but total number of particle in that state n. So, what we did he here, here basically what we did we had sum over j e to the minus beta e j we replaced it by sum over uh, uh, n k and then star e to the minus beta epsilon i n i here these are the basic they basically represent the same quantity because summing over the summing of the states of the system is equivalent to summing over summing over the occupation numbers. of each molecular level subjected to the condition some work k n g is n. So, they represent this, uh, uh, this sum of suppose this is our equation 1, sum of equation 1 and sum of equation 2, they, they are equivalent because summing over the states of the system means equation 1 is equivalent to the summing over the occupation numbers of each molecular level that is equation 2 subjected to the condition that sum over k n k gives n a number of particles or number of particles. Now, we also know partition function theta which is function of v, v, t and mu is sum over n goes from 0 to infinity e to the beta mu n and then q n v t we already derived that, we know that. Okay. So, we can write it like sum over n goes from 0 to infinity lambda to the n where lambda is e to the beta times mu. So, here what we did we substitute e to the beta mu by lambda and then q n v t we know that it is now it is it is sum over n k e to the minus beta sum over i n i times epsilon i. Okay. So, we can further proceed like 
we can write further So, we can take lambda inside the summation here. So, we can write lambda is sum over i n i. So, again i is the dummy variable here. So, because sum over i n i gives n and then the second term was there. So, we can write theta b d mu. So, in the next step what we did, what I did is theta is sum over n goes from 0 to infinity and sum over n k and then lambda and lambda uh, sum over i n i and e to the minus beta uh, epsilon i n i we can write like product of uh, product of lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k to the n k and here k varies from 1, 2, 3 like this. Okay, so, since now since we are summing over all values of n, each n k ranges over all possible values. So, equation 3 can be written as Now, we are replacing sum over n by n 1, n 2, sum over n 1, sum over n 2, etcetera, where n 1, n 2, the minimum value of n 1 is 0 and maximum value we say for n 1 is n 1 max. Similarly, for n 2, the minimum value is 0 and the maximum value of n 2, ma n 2 is n 2 max and so on. So, we can further simplify the above, the above equation like like sum over n 1 goes from n 1 starts from 0 to up to n 2 n 1 max lambda e to the minus beta epsilon 1 to the n 1 then times n 2 goes from 0 to n 2 max lambda e to the minus beta epsilon 2 to the n 2 and so on. 
So, we get a very simple expression So, we get a very simple expression theta is equals to equal to product sum over n k goes from 0 to n k max lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k to the n k. Suppose this is our equation number 4. So, so far we have not imposed any restriction or uh, any uh, assumption or any uh, approximation. Okay. So, for fermions there is a restriction there for fermions or for Fermi Dirac statistics since no two particles can be in the same quantum state so so for fermions or particles obeying fermi dirac statistics since no two particles can be in the same quantum state because of Pauli's exclusion principle. So, the maximum possible values of n 1 max is 1. Similarly, for n 2 max the maximum possible value of n 2 max is 1 and so on. So, uh, thus equation 4 becomes So, we had this equation, now we will impose, okay, so we will uh, how, so we will impose the condition that n 1 max is 1, n 2 max is 1 and so on and we get this. So, the actual derivation is we had the equation in 4, we had Theta is product over k and then sum over n k, n k goes from 0 to n k max lambda e to the minus beta epsilon e k to the n k and for F d statistics. We can write lambda F d uh, sorry theta F d is
So I have shown the actual derivation of how we arrived at equation 5 and below here. So what I did here, if you just impose the condition that a maximum value of n1, n2, etc. is 1, then if you, if you expand uh, this uh, equation 4, you get sum over n1, n1 goes from 0 to 1, lambda e to the minus beta epsilon 1 to the n1 times n2, again n2 goes from 0 to 1, lambda e to the minus beta epsilon 2 to the n2 and so on. Now, you substitute n1 equals to 0, you get 1 and then in the next line we are doing. So, if you substitute in the next line, if you substitute n1 equals to 0, we get first term is 1 and the second term is we substitute n1 equals to 1, we get lambda e to the minus beta epsilon 1. For the second term, if we substitute n2 equals to 0, we get uh, one term here and then we have plus, if we substitute n2 equals to 1, we get lambda e to the minus beta, lambda e to the minus beta epsilon 2 uh, and so on. Okay. So, we get 1 plus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k to the n k. So, this is our partition function or our Fermi Dirac distribution. So, this is the expression. Now, for B e statistics or for bosons, there is no such restriction in the number of particles found in a given state. So, again we will start with uh, from start from equation number 4 and we will derive uh, the partition function for Bose Einstein statistics. Okay, so, for or in, in, in uh, Bose Einstein statistics, On the other hand, in k can be 0, 1, 2, etcetera. Since there is no restriction on the occupancy of each state. Therefore, n1 max is equals to infinity n2 max equals to infinity and so on equation 4 becomes So, actual derivation I am showing now. So, this is our equation uh, 6, yes. So, equation 6 is the partition function for Bose Einstein statistics. Okay, so, from equation 4 we have the actual derivation I am showing now. So, equation 4 is Theta is by k sum over n k goes from n k goes from 0 to n k max 
and then we have lambda e to the minus beta k d beta epsilon k to the n k. So, we can write theta as So, if we uh, expand it, we get theta is 1 plus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon 1 plus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon 1 to the 2 plus the blah, blah, blah. And then for the second term, we get 1 plus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon 2 plus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon to the 2 plus and so on. Okay. So, next it is like 1 plus x plus x to the 2 plus x to the 3 like this. Okay. So, this is nothing but can write so for FD statistics, we get uh, so product of k 1 plus e to the minus beta epsilon k and in case of B statistics, we get theta b e is somewhat a product of k 1 minus e to the minus beta epsilon k. Here we considered lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k is less than 1. So, in general we can write So, we can write theta f d b is product of product over k and then 1 plus minus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k plus minus 1, where plus sign is for f t statistics. and minus sign is for B statistics. Okay. So, we have got the partition function or distribution function for F D and B statistics. Next, we calculate average number of particles is a n average 
this is nothing what we can call n is sum over k n k and we know how to calculate uh, average number of particles this is k b times t del ln theta by del mu at constant v n t. Now, lambda is e to the beta mu. So, d lambda is beta e to the beta mu d mu and we can write this is nothing but beta lambda d mu. So, d mu is nothing but 1 by beta lambda d lambda. So, average number of particles is nothing but k b t del ln theta by del lambda times 1 by 1 beta times lambda. So, yet average number of particles is nothing but lambda del ln theta by del lambda at constant volume and temperature. So, this is the average number of particles and we have uh, the expression for uh, theta. So, for FD statistics, So, for FD statistics, uh, this is our uh, expression. So, if we expand it, we get ln 1 plus lambda times e to the minus beta epsilon plus lambda ln 1 plus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon 2 and so on. So, this is ln f d. So, del ln f d del ln theta f d by del lambda at constant v and t we get 1 by 1 plus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon 1 for the first term and then we get uh, e to the minus beta epsilon 1 plus 1 by 1 plus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon 2 times e to the minus beta epsilon 2 and so on. So, we get del ln theta f t by del lambda at constant p and t we get sum over k e to the minus beta epsilon k by 1 plus lambda 1 plus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k. So, this is the value of uh, del ln f d by del ln theta f d by del lambda. So, average number of particles for f d statistics is sum over k lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k by 1 plus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k or we can further simplify this one as sum over k 1 by so this is land this is uh, n f t. So, now for uh, similarly for for uh, B e statistics, statistics similarly for B e statistics n b e is sum over k 
lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k by 1 minus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k. Okay. So, in general again like before we can write in general n f t or b e is sum over k lambda e to the beta epsilon k by 1 plus minus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k. Now, here again like before, like before here also the plus sign indicates so plus sign is for FD statistics and minus sign is for B statistics. Thank you.